Today we are out here with a Bergara B14 in the HMR series, obviously, with the stock, but I believe it's the Wilderness HMR. So this one is chambered in 308 Winchester. We're going to be doing some hand loads, testing accuracy at 85, 90 yards, roughly. I don't have an exact number, but it's not quite 100. We're testing the 174 grain Hornady ELD VT bullet. It's like really bright and the sun's right behind the camera, so I'm sorry I can't quite like look at you guys with my eyes open. But uh, anyway, um, it's a warm day, so we're shooting three shot groups, especially just to try to keep the barrel a little bit cooler, but um, trying to get a different baseline for each of these powders as far as accuracy is concerned. So we're using Peterson Brass CCI 200 primers, the 174 grain Hornady ELD VT, and then a variety of powders in three shot groups. So we got five different powders. We're going to be testing hydrogen, or I'm sorry, IMR 8208 XBR, 42 grains of that. 4064 by IMR as well, 42.5 grains of that. That's compressed, by the way, so just FYI for those of you out there. Uh, always refer to the disclaimer in the video description because that is very important for your safety. We're doing 43 and a half grains of Varget, 41.5 grains of Vitivory N140, and 42.5 grains of N540. And for those of you that don't know, Hodgdon makes Varget. So that's what we're gonna be testing for YouTube's little disclaimer. This is a bolt action rifle, five round magazine, safe range, private range. Um, everything is made to be very safe and whatnot. So anyway, now we will go ahead and commence the shooting. I am going to be starting with the IMR 8208 XBR, 42 grains of that. We're gonna do three shots. I kind of screwed up and made these bullets just a hair too long to feed from the magazine. They hang up on the feed ramp of the action itself. So I'm gonna have to single feed these. That's that's my bad. Um, I uh, had fully intended to just use a metal magazine without a binder plate and forgot to check to make sure they actually clear the feed ramp. So that's 100% my fault, but single feed is not a big deal. We can always change the, the uh, seating depth later and make sure that it's still gonna shoot okay assuming these shoot at all. So all the equipment and information on the gun, the ammo, the setup, everything, it's all gonna be in the description. So if you're curious about every aspect of the way the rifle is set up, by all means, look in the description, please, to save us some time in the video. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that 8208. Um, we're gonna go for the top left diamond on the target here. I've got some shots on the target already. That was this gun and that was these bullets we were trying to get the gun roughly sighted in so that we could stop on the or start on the top of the target here and not just completely be off paper so starting with the first round here of the 8208 with 42.0 grains Twenty-six thirty-three. it is so freaking humid outside good lord 2629 to start with sucks. It's 26, 29 on that last shot. 26.35, so super consistent velocity with that powder, but horrible accuracy. I mean, absolutely horrible. <laughs> Extreme spread of 5.9 feet per second and a standard deviation of 2.4. Stupid consistent velocity. It's a shame that they didn't shoot worth a ding dong on paper because that was that was awful. Um, we're going to move on to the 4064. We're going to be shooting 42.5 grains. It was mildly compressed. Um, remembering when I loaded these, and these bullets are seated out obviously too far, so I would not suggest loading to this just because I'm pretty sure it's too much powder as far as we can't squeeze any more in the case, and the bullets are seated out past mag length basically. So. Wouldn't recommend it, but they're already loaded. We're gonna shoot them. Um, I'm not too worried about the barrel being warm because that's what we sighted the gun in with was that powder and these bullets, and uh, it didn't seem like it really liked them either. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot these suckers, give the gun a minute to cool off, and then we're gonna try the Vargetting after that. We're gonna be going for the top of the center diamond on this group. Twenty-six fourteen. Holy crap, these things are shooting horrible. 2617. Velocity's really consistent. What are the odds? Oh, that sucks. 2607. So the velocities really aren't that bad as far as um, they're consistent, but 
they're like just wildly inaccurate groups. Um, extreme spread of 10.4 and a standard deviation of 4.4. That's like stupid consistent velocities. I just wish these bullets were actually grouping. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the cameras off for a minute, let this thing cool down because it's probably decently hot at this point and uh, we're gonna come back and shoot these next groups. Okay, so we gave the rifle plenty of time to cool down. Now, in saying that, I just felt the barrel and it's still like really warm, um, but it's like 97 degrees out here, so I don't think that cool means cool anymore. I think cool is just not flaming hot. So, if I can touch the barrel, it's cool. Point is, we are going to shoot 43 and a half grains of Argot right now, regardless of the fact of the barrel not being cool. But, we gave it quite a while. I actually went and did some other stuff for a good amount of time and then came back <laughs> and it's it's still hot so um, not an ideal day to shoot but we're gonna work with it because it's what we have to work with and you know God's plan is bigger than mine so we're gonna go ahead and go for the top right diamond we are shooting 43.5 grains of Varget and we're going to try to quit shooting two inch groups because that just makes me sad 2606 2604. I got a bald eagle flying over me right now. That is like the coolest thing I've seen all day. Golly, I just, for some reason, I just feel like this gun doesn't like this bullet. Couldn't tell you why. All right, part of me thinks uh, I should just give up and go home and cry myself to sleep, but we're not gonna do that because we're more determined than that. Um, the velocities. On that last one, it was 2611. The session summary was an extreme spread of 7.3 and a standard deviation of 3. That just blows my mind that they can have that tight of velocity and that horrible of a group on the paper. Just crazy. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into the next one, even though I probably shouldn't, but at this point, I just kind of want to be done. Ugh. This is classic. 308 performance for me just underwhelming because normally they just don't shoot good for me anything 30 cal really doesn't even matter what cartridge just it's got 308 as the bullet diameter probably not gonna shoot well that's just kind of my life so we are going to be transitioning on the target to the left side of the center diamond and we are going to be shooting 41 and a half grains of Vitavori N140 which is on the burn rate chart very close to Varget. Um, not that that matters at this point because we're still shooting that same bullet. But we're gonna give that a shot. Left side of the center diamond, let's just see how it does. 25.33, that's quite a bit slower. I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is about Vitavori, but every time I reference their load data, everything's always slower. It's like they just, they don't, they don't consider the same Max as everybody else, which it's fine because you know what the less people blow up their guns or ruin their guns or whatever break parts The less the better, but I just they're never Seems like they never match up to any of the other manufacturers published maxes Velocity still sucks or the uh, sorry not the velocity the uh, accuracy still sucks 25 22 Let's hope I don't hit this airplane Two in one hole, look at that. Only the first one didn't go two inches higher. 2532, extreme spread of 11 and a standard deviation of five. Excellent, just not on paper. So I am going to give the gun a break against my better judgment, because at this point, I think I should just shoot the last group and call it a day. But we're gonna give the gun some time. I'm gonna let it cool off. We're gonna do the same thing, shut off the cameras and we'll be back. So against my better judgment, I have let the rifle cool off in order to prolong the suffering of the viewers, which is you. That sun is stupid bright, oh my goodness. Um, we are gonna shoot this last group, and it's going to be 42.5 grains of Vitivori in 540, which should give us a better velocity than the 140 did, in theory, but we'll see if that's true. Doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, two or three inch groups, that's not something I really care about. <clears throat> I got this song stuck in my head that's like, 
really getting on my nerves because I can't think of the name of it and that's always really frustrating. I don't know why that happens so often to me, but it's probably because I don't know the names of half these songs anyway. You just kind of know the tune. I'd sing it for you guys, but I, I don't actually want you to quit watching, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna do that to you. But we are going to put this last group on the right side of the center diamond. 2572. So the velocity was a little bit faster, but it's not even over 2600. So it's still slower than I think all the other ones that we did with the Hodgson and IMR powders. 2591. Well, that's like actually the first decent group that we've shot out of this gun this entire time. So, okay. Um, that could just be a fluke. I don't know. That was a 2612 on the velocity, by the way. Let's go over the velocity real quick and then I'll talk about this and uh, what we're going to do going forward. Okay, so the velocity spread on that was 39 feet per second extreme spread and a standard deviation of 16. Now, Here's the deal. I just tried five different powders and all but one produced roughly two inch, probably over two inch groups. Three shot groups. They were shooting horrible. Now, I would have to change the seating depth on these loads anyway because they were too long. And uh, conventional wisdom, which I do not follow, mind you, I'm not saying that this is advice I'm giving you, but conventional wisdom says closer to the lands, the more accurate they'll be. That's not true. But the point is, that's kind of what everybody tends to believe. My perspective is that if I have to change the seating depth, we weren't going to be shooting these loads anyway. So in theory, I could seat them deeper. They might shoot different. I'm not saying better, but they might shoot better in theory with a different seating depth anyway. And then we could try different, you know, stuff with the powder again. Um, however, my thoughts, uh, I just kind of want to abandon this bullet. Even though that last group shot decent, the velocity wasn't that high and I would want to put more powder in it, which I would have thought that the the powders that produced a lower velocity would have been a little calmer as far as like not disrupting the gun as much and maybe shoot better, but that just didn't necessarily seem to be the case because that M140 was still really bad. The M540 might be a contender. I mean, we legitimately make be able to seat that bullet deeper and then put more powder in it get better velocity and keep the group size small enough to be acceptable. But the problem is, again, we're not even at 100 yards. And two, the uh, velocity characteristics were not impressive. The rest of them were pretty tight, but that one was the biggest outlier as far as opening up the velocity spread. And so that way we're getting okay accuracy and the velocity is not impressive. So it's like, do I really want to mess with it anymore? I don't know what bullet we're going to try next. I wanted to try this bullet for the sake of um, testing out the new product because people have been kind of asking to see it. So there you go. I hope, uh, I hope that encourages everybody to buy Hornady. I'm not exactly doing Hornady a lot of favors on this channel and that's not intentional. But um, in order to try to save you guys from not being bored out of your mind, I am going to bring out one more gun and maybe put it on the end of this video so that you can hopefully see a couple good groups before we call it a day but let me grab that real quick we'll do a little more shooting and uh then we will pack up and head home for the night because it's like i'm, I'm tired I'm, this just this weather sucks so i lied because i was going to shoot that other gun but i forgot to bring the ammo for said gun so um that's going to conclude today's video again if you guys are interested in all the equipment and whatnot that we're using in the video I'm going to have that in the description as well as links to our other platforms if you guys are interested in following us over there. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, yada yada, leave it in the uh, comments below please. And or shoot me a message and I'll try to get to you. But uh, have any suggestions going forward, let me know. And we'll hope to see you guys on the next video. Y'all stay risen, take care, and be safe.